Hello viewers, welcome to AP Soft Technology Pearls. Today we shall study the OCT findings in hydroxychloroquine retinopathy. OCT is now one of the recommendations for screening for hydroxychloroquine toxicity. The characteristic findings are loss of the ellipsoid zone and in the later stages loss of the outer retinal layers in the parafoveal region. So here you can see the ellipsoid zone, it disappears in the parafoveal region. Others like Lally et al. described certain other features in early cases such as parafoveal thinning of the outer nuclear layer as is seen in this picture. Compare this with an OCT of that of a normal person. In addition, parafoveal interdigitation zone disruption and a reduced reflectivity of the ellipsoid zone in the parafoveal region thus enhancing the appearance of the foveal ellipsoid zone are also seen. This last sign by itself is not pathological but could lead one to investigate further. Here you can see loss of the ellipsoid zone and you can, here you can see a decreased reflectivity of the ellipsoid zone. In well-established cases, often you get features that make the macula look like a flying saucer. This hyporeflective space corresponds to the dome of the flying saucer and this area corresponds to the rest of the flying saucer. The main characteristics of this sign include loss of the normal foveal depression, parafoveal thinning of the outer nuclear layer, parafoveal loss of the ellipsoid zone, an ovoid appearance of the central fovea and conservation in the foveal uh, zone of the outer retinal structures and ellipsoid zone and an apparent posterior displacement of the inner retinal structures towards the retinal uh, pigment epithelium. This is another OCT that shows the classic flying saucer sign of hydroxychloroquine toxicity. With further damage, the retinal pigment epithelium is also disrupted as is evidenced by the increased choroidal transmission as is seen here. You can also see the total absence of the outer nuclear layer in this region. Here you can see the flying saucer sign and also more extensive loss of the retinal pigment epithelium. Recently, some studies have shown a more peripheral site for early onset of hydroxychloroquine toxicity in Asians where the early lesions have been shown to be pericentral rather than parafoveal in the temporal region first. And so, a wide horizontal line scan has been recommended in Asians in order to pick up these early signs. This is another Asian patient with early pericentral changes. Another example of the flying saucer sign, here you can observe the shallowing of the foveal outline, gross thinning of the outer nuclear layer outside of the fovea, a hyporeflectivity of the ellipsoid zone, parafovea. In severe cases, the ellipsoid zone and outer retinal changes can extend to the foveal region as well. What are the factors that increase the risk for hydroxychloroquine retinopathy? Duration of use greater than 5 years, accumulative total dose greater than 1000 grams, greater than 400 milligrams per day of hydroxychloroquine or for short individuals greater than 6.5 milligrams per kg ideal body weight, elderly persons, kidney or liver dysfunction, retinal disease or maculopathy. Baseline screening is done within the first year of starting treatment and annually after the first five years. The annual screening can start sooner in patients with additional risk factors as just discussed. The recommended screening procedures include an ocular examination and an automated visual field. A dilated retinal examination is important not for screening but for detection of associated retinal disorders. Automated visual fields with a white 10-2 threshold testing should be done. In addition, if available, one or more of the following objective tests must be performed. Spectral domain OCT, time domain OCT is not permitted, 
multifocal ERG and fundus autofluorescence. So that's it for today. If you like what you saw, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from APs of the Moji Pearls. You may watch my other videos by clicking on the thumbnails. Please leave a note in the comment section if you wish for any particular topic to be covered in future. Look forward to regular updates. Thank you for watching.